Hey guys, what's up? There's a lot going on in March in sports, and the sports card world is right behind it. We've got the NFL Combine, March Madness, MLB Preseason, and then on top of that, we've got NFL free agency moves that are going to be being made. So big question, how can we leverage this to help build our sports card empire? I want to talk about some specific players and things going on. Uh, but overall, just strategy on what I'm implementing this offseason. Before we get too far into it, though, I'm going to do some self-promo. I'm about to wrap up this painting behind me. It's looking good. Jaden Daniels, Heisman winner, future NFL star. I'm doing a giveaway. It's Gold Sage Auto out of 100. I think out of the first 50 to 100, somewhere in that range, prints that I sell of this painting here, I'm going to be drawing somebody out of that and sending this along with their print. So a few finishing touches. I'm excited to get it out there. Kick off cards and canvas, right? Jaden Daniels back to why you're here. <laughs> so like I said, there's a lot going on this time of year. Um, a lot of it goes around prospecting, which is super fun and very high risk in sports cards. Excited to see how the Bowman Chrome does. I wasn't around for March Madness last year. There's a lot more product with the college prospects out there on the market. So those will be doing this and we're gonna take advantage of it. Big players to watch out for. Most of them you probably know. Caitlin Clark. Just beat the scoring record and she just declared for as of recording this, she just declared for the WNBA draft. So it'll be interesting to see if the hype behind her follows into the pros. Another women's basketball player, Hannah Hidalgo. For the three-point sharpshooter, Anna DeWolf is over four tonight. I'm a November's uh, one of my favorite women is Hannah Hidalgo once again. She's a freak athlete. She had a lot of hype after the McDonald's All-American game. She's one of the top players out of that product, but her Bowman cards... Are going pretty low with the tournament coming up i think she's going to have a few big games i think they're going to beat some teams maybe they shouldn't and if that happens then there's going to be a lot of hype and people are going to be scrambling to buy all over cards and we're going to have them all and we're going to sell them back for a profit obviously the big schools uh kentucky ku duke having some top bowman product of those guys i've been accumulating on my own uh some of them don't sell individually but a lot of them can sell if you throw them into lots. They want to look for teams that have a lot of NBA prospects. I think uh, Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham are both projected first round. So that's a team that you want to target. If they have a few good games in March Madness, to the moon. And then just in general, when you're looking at teams and scouting for March Madness and around these big events, um, let's see. I just pulled this. I just pulled... Jawan Roberts autograph, numbered out of 199. Not the biggest name in the product. I think these are going for four or five bucks, but maybe he has a good game in March Madness. So I'm not flipping it right now. I'm waiting to see if his market goes up after a good game, maybe his draft stock goes up. The projected number one seed. So I think this is a underrated way. Just make a couple extra percentage points off of the same card. Is this gonna go to $100? Probably not. I feel pretty safe saying no, but might go from five to 10 if he has a couple really good games in March Madness. So setting these aside, these are a few of the lots and individual cards that I expect to gain value. Next, we've got the 2024 NFL Combine and Draft. This draft is absolutely stacked. I'm not sure if it's just because I didn't pay attention as much last year as I am this year, but man, some of the prospects this first round is going to be absolutely crazy. It seems like almost every team is going to get their guy, except for maybe the Panthers. <laughs> Obviously, all of this is led by none other than Caleb Williams. It's a keeper. Williams running for his life. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown! Probably heard a lot of the talk. One of the most talented prospects that we've seen come out in a long time. Personally, I think the talent's there. I agree with some of the talk on the emotional side and how he'll handle the transition to the pros. But along with that, 
it seems like people are really just dogpiling on and taking some pretty uh, hot takes. The craziest thing about this draft, uh, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, um, and a few other QBs that look like in years past, they would have been for surefire first round dudes. But compared to this to like 2022 and the years around that, like, would you rather take Penix in the second round or Kenny Pickett in the first, right? And then you've got the same thing at receiver. Last year, they're all under 200 pounds of streaky wide receivers. And now you've got all these like 6'3 to 6'5 giants running 4'4'40s. It's absolutely insane. Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Keon Coleman, uh, Xavier Worthy just broke the 40 record. Dude's blazing fast. He's massive. Probably not going to go in the first round. We've got dudes like Adonai Mitchell. He draws comparisons to C.D. Lamb, and they expect him to fall to the Chiefs at pick 32. That is insane. Okay, same thing. Can we use this to leverage our sports card interest, right? So most mock drafts have Marvin Harrison going to the Cardinals at four. Who benefits the most from Marvin Harrison coming to the Cardinals? Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray's market's already crawling up. It's probably too late, but that's a good example of how of the thinking pattern you want to have with these events. Here's a sneaky one that I think is a little bit more potential, but you'll see how we can kind of extrapolate that thinking and the deals that I'm targeting here. See, the, these mock drafts are all fooey, right? We see guys drop every year. So imagine Drake May or Jaden Daniels drops to a team like the Falcons, you know, sitting there early first round, not expected to get the top quarterback prospect, but if they do, Drake London's cards are going to go crazy. He already has a market. He's agreed upon as a top receiver with all the talent in the world. He puts on shows with Desmond Ritter. So imagine the hype if they get a centerpiece that they need to have B. John Robinson, Drake London, Jaden Daniels, right? So you guys see where I'm thinking here? Obviously, very difficult, almost impossible to predict, but you can arbitrage your bets. Instead of jumping on the bandwagon of, oh, Marvin Harrison to the Cardinals, we can stay a step ahead of some of that redundancy because if the market's already moving in a direction, you're too late. That's kind of my approach. I always try to buy the dip. You know, everybody's cards are right here. And if you do it long enough, you start to get a feel, okay, this card's either going towards the peak or it's about to peak. And then when it's on its way down and we start getting some low comps and we get some good deals on these cards and then we hold them. An example of what I was doing mid-season, nobody was thinking about Joe Burrow. In the mid-season, I picked up Joe Burrow's Orange Laser Rookie Prism for $100. Now that he's getting some hype, he's going to be back. Who are they going to pick in the draft, right? Is, are the Bengals going to look like the old Bengals? It's already gone up. I think there's been a few comps around $200. I've already made 100%. That's an easy flip. And then here's another tip. So along with that, right, we're focused on these big names. J.J. McCarthy, Marvin Harrison. Who's going to benefit from that? We can't forget about dudes like Brandon Ennis. I've been able to scoop up all the numbered Bowman that I see of this guy. He's going to be probably the top receiver at Ohio State next year. You're getting this for super cheap. And if you imagine he has half the season that Marvin had, and he goes into the next year's draft as a projected first rounder, these are going to be way high. So I'm already thinking about next year's draft and all the hype that it's going to get in March. So you start to get pretty fluid with all these tips and tricks. It's a lot early on. Just stick with it. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. I'm not afraid to show you guys the strategies that I'm using because we all benefit. It's all hypothetical right now anyway. So we'll see where it goes. Hopefully I'm right. Don't get mad at me. This is just what I'm doing. If you guys are still hanging out, thank you so much for the support that you've been giving me lately. I've been getting a lot of engagement on the videos. Uh, it seems like you guys are enjoying them. I enjoy making them. It's fun to talk about this stuff. Hoping to hit 100 subs soon. Like I said earlier in the video, make sure you're subscribed so that you know when this thing drops and you guys can get in, get a cool print. I'm trying to do something cool with this giveaway. You get the print for the same price, but along with that, you get an extra chance to get a really cool card of one of my favorite prospects going into the NFL next year. But you're still getting the value from your purchase of the art print. Next video, we're looking into the free agent market and some of the guys that I'm targeting with that, the strategies I'm implementing. If you found this interesting, you'll probably like that one. Um, possible PSA submission, and then wrapping up the painting. So if you stay this long, I'm going to tell you my NFL draft dream.
for the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm a huge Chiefs fan. I live in the Kansas City area. Brock Bowers is one of the top, is probably the best tight end prospect that we've ever seen. He's the Caleb Williams of the tight end position without all of the drama. Imagine the Chiefs pick Brock Bowers, and he works alongside Kelsey, and he gets that chemistry with Mahomes. Oh, baby, that would be dangerous. Let me know what your guys' draft fantasy is. Um, I'm sure you guys have some crazy ones like mine. All right, see you in the next one.